and government intrusions. Listen here Sunday nights at 9. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. It's a story that uh, started locally and is now a national story. This the decision of Bishop Thomas Paprocki, who is uh, an American prelate of the Roman Catholic Church and serves as the bishop of the Diocese of Springfield, his decision to say to Madigan, Cullerton, the diminutive pro-abortion Dem bosses, and other politicians who uh, support late-term abortions, effectively infanticide, uh, no communion for you in the churches over which I preside. And, of course, this is drawing response from uh, those inside and outside the church, including uh, inside the church, kind of, sort of, I guess, still. I don't know why. Father Flager posting on Facebook yesterday. Sadly, the Bishop of Springfield has called out President Cullerton and Speaker Madigan by name and told all, all those who support the abortion bill were forbidden communion in Springfield, his diocese, because of their sin. Now, I'm against abortion, says Flager, okay. but if sin should ban us from communion, then no one should go to communion, including all priests and, yes, the bishop. For a response to what Flager had to say and some others, we're pleased to be joined by the aforesaid Bishop Thomas Paprocki. Bishop, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Good to be with you. So what do you say in response to uh, the good Father Flager? Well, I'd say, first of all, that his uh, theology is completely erroneous. Our Catholic uh, teaching is that uh, in order to go to communion, if we are conscious of grave sin, that we should go to sacramental confession. We should confess our sins and ask our Lord to forgive us. And, and uh, that's one of the seven sacraments, and that's an essential part of our our faith. And if he doesn't understand that, well, then he, he has a very, uh, uh, it's a, not only a poor grasp of theology, I, I say he has very uh, faulty theology. Secondly, uh, I would say that in terms of uh, this idea that um, uh, it's 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 a bad strategy uh, to be denying people communion. You know, if he he says that he's opposed to abortion, I don't know what strategy he's working, but uh, I've uh, the strategy of appeasement uh, obviously is not working, and I think that's kind of what uh, we've been doing uh, for the past 15 years or so, uh, going back to 2004 when. Uh, Senator John Kerry was running for president, and there was a lot of discussion then about whether or not uh, pro-abortion Catholic politicians should be given uh, communion, and we had an extensive discussion about that at our uh, June meeting in 2004, and it was uh, decided that that would be up to each individual bishop to make a prudential judgment uh, on what uh, would be best in his diocese. And since since that time, it seems most bishops have taken the approach that, well, we don't want to be uh, punitive. We don't want to uh, tell people they can't go to communion. Uh, let's just, um, let's try to be nice to them, and, and maybe maybe they'll uh, uh, come and see things uh, the way the Church teaches uh, about abortion being wrong. And what we've seen is just the opposite. They've continued to push uh, more and more extreme uh, measures, you know, two years ago with HB 40, House Bill 40 in Illinois, we got taxpayer funding of abortion. Mm-hmm. Uh, now with uh, Senate Bill 25 last week, we have uh, uh, de- abortion being declared a fundamental right. Now private insurance has to pay for abortion, and we're being told that a, an unborn baby has no independent rights of its own. And uh, I would say that strategy of appeasement is simply not working. And uh, also, you know, I'm a hockey player, and uh, and if somebody is uh, punching you in the face, you don't just stand there and take the punches. You defend yourself. Yeah, but why and, just them? Why not the, all the Democratic lawmakers in Springfield? Like, how did you arrive? What was the moment you said, you know what, <clears throat> I'm going to put my foot down now, and these two men, politicians, are not going to be allowed to take communion? Well, because they've they've exercised a, a leadership role in facilitating the passage of these extreme anti, uh, these extreme abortion bills. Uh, so the, the canon that I cited, cited in canon law, it says someone that uh, obstinately persists and manifests grave sin are not to be admitted to Holy Communion. So it's got to be 
obstinate. I think uh, you could say that it's very clear in this case. These these uh, leaders have uh, just uh, very stubbornly dug in and said we're not going to we're not going to uh, change our position. Persistent. They've been voting this way for years, uh, and I cited the last two cases in particular with HB 40 and SB 25, and then their leadership role really uh, aggravates this. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd say, you know, I used the hockey analogy. I said, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, punching the face. I mean, these are our teammates, supposedly. They, they say they're Catholic. They're supposedly our teammates, and they're kicking us in the teeth. No, but, uh, uh, but to, to be fair, I mean, it's only been 80 years between the two of them. I mean, don't you think it's a bit of a quick trigger? Uh, and I, so I want to go back to something you said, though, you, the uh, strategy of appeasement. Is that even the strategy? Is that what really is that what Flager is doing and others who uh, won't take the stand that you're doing? Or is it, do you think, maybe the case that um, they are behaving like politicians? They they have other issues on which they want to interact with the politicians. So, number one, they don't want the political heat. And number two, they want to keep the lines of communication open in the event that they want something else from a Madigan or a Cullerton or a. Durbin or whoever. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what Father Flager's uh, motivation is, or or others in this case. I think it's, you know, it, it seems that um, the position that uh, a lot of uh, people have taken in the church is that uh, you know we we shouldn't uh, be harsh w- with people, and I, I don't want to be harsh with people. I don't want to be punitive with people. What I'm I'm hoping here is that there'll be a change of heart. I'm calling people. Uh, to conversion, but I think unfortunately, what you see um, certainly with these uh, politicians, it's, it comes down to a choice. Are you going to? Uh, what's more important? Is it your pro-abortion views or is it your Catholic faith? And I think we have people here, uh, politicians, saying that uh, the, their the pro-abortion platform of the Democratic Party is more important to me than the, than the pro-life uh, teachings of the Catholic faith. Well, it, it, so it comes down to you've got to make a choice, and they're making the wrong choice. Yeah, I would say they're making the choice politi- uh, in, in favor of their political ambitions beyond party. It's, it's much more individual because, of course, uh, as is the case, let's say, Jesse Jackson Sr., uh, John Cullerton and Mike Madigan marketed themselves for years as pro-life Democrats. I mean, Mike Madigan, I, he may still to this day say he's pro-life. I don't know. But uh, they, they, the, those in the political arena know that they, they suggested that they were pro-life for many, many years until it became politically disadvantageous, politically problematic. And so then they never really an- announced any change. They just started doing exactly what you suggested they've been doing for years. Well, that's exactly the case with Senator Dick Durbin. Yes. Uh, who was, yes. was told 15 years ago uh, that he shouldn't be going to Holy Communion because already at that time he had uh, developed a, a pro-abortion voting record. But, uh, you know, people here in central Illinois uh, remember when he was first starting out in politics, and they've, they've told me that when, when he first started out, he was uh, he co- considered himself to be a pro-life Democrat. That's right. And, uh, and uh, so somewhere along the line he flip-flopped and apparently decided it was politically advantageous for him to to be voting pro-abortion so that's really unfortunate well what do you want to say to your critics who say you're using holy communion as a weapon what i'm doing is uh i'm, I'm protecting the integrity of the sacraments uh the sacrament of holy communion to receive holy communion is one of the most sacred aspects of our of our catholic faith and it should not be uh, taken lightly you know as part of our our faith is that uh if you are conscious of grave sin, you should you should repent your sins. You should go to confession. You should try to make amends, uh, and and that's what I'm trying to do here. You know, I, I really would like to see these politicians have a change of heart and and say that they're sorry. But it's it's more than that. Uh, you know, when we we teach that when you're you're sorry for your sins, you you have to make reparation. You have to make restitution. You know, for example, if somebody steals a million dollars. And they go to confession and they say, well, you know, that's really bad. I stole a million dollars. But if they keep the million dollars, then they're re- not really sorry. So the church teaches, well, part of uh, your forgiveness is you have to give that million dollars back. You have to make restitution. So the same thing here is if I would hope that they would say, gee, you know, I've, I've thought about this more. And, I, you know, I, I think this pro-abortion voting record is really not good. I'm very sorry about that. Then I'd say, OK, if you're still on the and the Illinois General Assembly, then now you have a duty to introduce some legislation to repeal those pro-abortion bills that, that you helped to pass. 
Uh, Cardinal Supic, uh, not echoing your sentiment, I mean, not going the direction of Father Flager, but issuing a statement saying that uh, his longstanding position over 20 plus years as a bishop is that it's important to place the emphasis on teaching what the church believes about important issues of the day, all while maintaining an unshakable confidence that the Eucharist is an opportunity of grace and conversion to bring people to the truth. And while that's all true, that's just sort of a a, a way of dodging the issue of whether or not uh, he supports what you're doing. Certainly, he hasn't made the same call. Does that disappoint you? Well, uh, as I said, I mean, we've been I've been hearing things like that for the last 15 or 20 years now. And, uh, uh, you know, it's obvious that uh, the politicians are, are not not swayed by that. Uh, they're 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 just continuing to say, well, uh, the church um, doesn't seem to you know, they're saying they're saying these nice things. But um, I think that's the part that's very scandalous for for the faithful. And that's that's the other part here is uh, in terms of holding up the integrity of our faith. Uh, it's just I don't think it's possible for uh, uh, politicians to say I'm I'm a Catholic in good standing, and yet I support uh, abortion rights. I support abortion rights, and I'm going to make a, abortion a fundamental right uh, in this state. And uh, you know, so that that approach of of saying, well, we we would hope that uh, let's just uh, continue to. Um, uh, keep things going as they are and, and not take any uh, uh, strong action here. I, it's not working. I, there's a case uh, back in 1962 when the Archbishop of New Orleans excommunicated uh, uh, segregationist leaders uh, because of their their racist positions, and that was applauded at the time. You know, people saying, "Well, you know, the Archbishop of the Catholic Church is standing up uh, against uh, racism." Mm. And, um, you know, it, it's very interesting that uh, here you've got, I think, it's a similar kind of uh, thing as if the church uh, does nothing. If we could say, well, these these people are, are still Catholics in good standing. They can go to Holy Communion. There's no no problem here. Well, well, then, in a sense, it, it would be it would have been similar as if the church just stood stood by and let the segregation has prevail in, in the 1960s. I talked to uh, I taped a show, actually, with another pro-abortion Catholic Democrat. Uh, named uh, Bob Martwick from the northwest side of the city yesterday, and uh, his uh, criticism of you in opposing what the call that you made on Cullerton and Madigan is, you know, additionally because you know he's he's concerned about the church, of course. Uh, he suggested that your decision and decisions like that will lead to fewer Catholics in the pews on Sundays. Is that something that concerns you? Well, I, I'd have to say that I'm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, what I'm hearing is that uh, people I've I've heard people uh, have told me that they came to the church because of the of the clear, at least in my diocese, because of the clear teaching you know that we are uh, stating about what what the church stands on these things. I I think what we see is just the opposite. It's a it's a unfortunate. Uh, you know, many of the mainline Protestant uh, churches uh, that they have tried to take a very liberal. Uh, accommodationist position on issues uh, like abortion and and same-sex marriage, and unfortunately, what we we see there is uh, they've lost uh, tremendous numbers of people. So uh, I, I think that uh, people it's the opposite. I think people are attracted by the clarity of our faith. The faith is demanding. Uh, I think that uh, it takes uh, sacrifices to uh, to really uphold the faith. And you know, when if the bar is too low, people are, are going to say, you know what, this, there's really no challenge here. Why, mm-hmm. why bother going to church? Or the bar is, is, is set high. The, the Lord uh, set a very high bar for us. But he realizes, you know, we're, we're going to struggle along the way. But that's part of you know, why he established the church. The church is established for sinners, and he knows that we're going to fall short. Uh, of, of those uh, those high ideals, and, and so he gives us the sacraments, and, and so these sacraments are indeed uh, intended to help us, but, uh, you know, the sacrament of, of, of confession, reconciliation, goes very much hand-in-hand hand with, with Holy Communion, and, and you know, so for, uh, uh, and that's the way it, it was for years. People understood that if, if they were living a sinful life, if they were uh, um, cohabiting, for example, and they were not married. Well, you don't go to communion until you 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 regularize that situation. You you 
confess your sins, you, you get married, and you live according you know, to the teachings of the church. But this idea that you can, you can do whatever you want, uh, and you can still go to communion, still be a Catholic in good standing, well, that's just not the, that's not the 2,000-year tradition of the church. Yeah, I have a feeling your pews are going to be full this weekend. I hope so. I think I'll people are going to support you and what you did. So. Well, I think I, yeah, I think uh, the analysis is spot on as usual. Uh, he is Bishop Thomas Paprocki. He is the bishop of the Diocese of uh, Springfield, uh, also a hockey player. Do do they call? We got a tweet about this, uh, Bishop. Do, do they call you the Holy Goalie by any chance? <laughs> Well, that... yes, they do. I, I hope that doesn't mean there are too many holes in my game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bishop Paprocki, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. God bless. You too. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The more you listen, the more you listen, the more you'll know. This is Chicago's Morning Answer.